Hello, this is Mary Chib with Bentley Systems, back to talk more about the railing tool in Open Buildings Designer. Continuing with my kit of parts for railings, today I'm going to create a couple of parametric balusters. Now I've created a railing balusters project cell library. I should mention that the naming of the cell library is important. This one needs to start with railing balusters, no spaces. The default configuration is set to find the cells for balusters in any library that starts with the phrase railing balusters within the selected workspace or work set. So currently I have just the default model, and just as I did for the parametric panels, I'm going to use the default model as a template for parametric balusters. I'm going to start by making sure that in the model properties, I have set this model to be placed as a parametric cell. I also want to open the variables dialog and set the item type to railing parametric baluster. This creates some standard variables that are used by the railing tool. For balusters, those variables will be height and thickness. Once that is done, I will check my level attributes. I will start with construction geometry that I do not want to see in the cell. So I'm using the default level. Color and line style can be anything, but do pay attention to the element class. I want to be sure that anything I don't want to see in the railing is set to construction. Now for balusters, this will be a pretty simple template. I am just going to create a construction line that defines the center of the baluster along with the overall height and then a square profile that is based on the thickness variable. This may or may not be used, but I think it will be a useful part of the template. Using the Smart Line tool, I will place a line vertically up from the 00, zero origin as this will be the placement point of the baluster. Then I will use the Place Block tool to place a rectangle around the 00, zero origin, and this should be placed on the XY plane. Since I cannot constrain 2D geometry that is in different planes, I'm going to add two more lines along the X and Y axis, and this will be used to constrain the rectangle. Now I need to constrain the geometry. I will start by constraining the line geometry with fixed constraints. To fix the vertex or midpoint of a line, you want to select the line near the vertex and then data point when you see the red crosshairs. I will fix each of the three lines at the origin. I can also fix the direction of a line by simply selecting the line. So I will fix the direction of each of the three lines. Next, I will constrain the rectangle, and I'm going to use the thickness variable to define the length and width of the rectangle. But first, I will use the Auto Constraint tool to constrain it as a rectangle with parallel sides and one perpendicular corner. I can also use the Parallel Constraint to constrain at least one side in each direction to be parallel to the lines at the X and Y axis. Now, to make sure that the rectangle is centered about the origin, I can use the equal distance constraint to define the distance between two sides and the center as equal. And finally, I can define the distance between each side using the distance constraint. and selecting the thickness variable as the value. That defines the profile. All that is left is to define the height of the vertical center line. I will use the by element constraint to define the distance and select the height variable as the value. So that is the template. Now I will copy the model and create my first baluster. This will be a simple one. I will name it Balustrade Type 1.
Now I will use the construction geometry to create the baluster geometry. I will first select a family in part. I'm going to select circulation railing. This resets my level and attributes, but I also want to make sure that the class is set back to primary. I will switch to the modeling workflow and use the extrude along tool to extrude the square profile along the path. We can lock the profile rotation and no need to hide the path or profile since there are already constructions. Now I simply select the path and then the profile. The part has been applied but not the attributes. So we will just use change attributes to pick up the correct attributes and most importantly, make sure this is a primary class element. Now that we have updated the attributes, I am just going to turn off constructions in view attributes and make sure that I am seeing only the geometry that I want to see in my railing model. We will also double check that all the variables are working by adjusting them in the variables dialog. I'll change the thickness to 20 millimeters and the size of the baluster is adjusted. And I will change the height to 800 millimeters and the height of the baluster is adjusted. Now we will create a second baluster, which will just be a slight variation on this one. I'll copy the default model again and name this cell balustrade type two. Again, I want to set the family in part. And I will use the extrude tool. This time I'm going to add a spin of 180 degrees to the baluster. and extrude the profile along the path. And again, the family in part is applied, but I need to change the attributes. And again, it responds to the height and thickness variables. Now I'm going to create a more contemporary baluster. I will call this one balustrade type three. For this one, I'm going to add some additional construction geometry, a vertical rectangle, which will float on the center baluster. I will draw the rectangle in the front plane. Once it is drawn, I will move it and use the nearest snap to make sure the rectangle is in the same plane as the vertical line. I will auto constrain the rectangle, then create a parallel constraint between one side and the vertical line. I will use the equal distance constraint to center the rectangle on the vertical line and then use the distance constraint to define the width at 100 millimeters. I actually want the height of the rectangle to adjust with the height of the baluster, meaning I want to maintain 100 millimeter space at the top and the bottom. So I will add a distance constraint from each end of the vertical line to the top edge of the rectangle. I may want to again test 
the height variable to make sure the geometry adjusts as I want. Now I'll set the family in part and extrude the baluster geometry from the profiles. I'll start with the vertical, which I need to create at the top and the bottom, above and below the rectangle. I can do this by defining a start distance and an end distance along the path. Fairly easy for the bottom, the start distance is zero and the end distance is 100 millimeters. and change the attributes. However, for the top, I need to set the start distance as the height minus 100 millimeters and the end distance as the height. In order to do this, I will create a local variable named top that uses the expression height minus 100. Therefore, this variable's value is always 100 millimeters less than the height variable. I will then link the start distance to the new variable top and link the end distance to the variable height. I can then use the same path and profile to extrude the top end of the baluster. And then change the attributes. Now for the rectangular piece, we will just use the extrude tool. Now since the rectangle geometry is at the center of the baluster, we need to extrude this in both directions which means my extrusion distance is actually half the thickness. So again, I will create a local variable, thickness2, that uses an expression to calculate half of the thickness value. I will then link the distance to the new variable, thickness2, and link the thickness to the variable thickness with the alignment set to center and make sure orthogonal in both directions is turned on. Then simply select the rectangle and extrude. And again, it is a good idea to check the variables. Now, since the baluster is made up of three separate extrusions, you may want to unite those solids. I'll use the Unite Solids tool. I'll hide the originals and toggle off Merge Parametric Solids. Then simply use the Control key to select all three elements and data point to accept. Now the baluster is a single piece of geometry that responds to changes to both the height and the thickness variable. We now have three different balusters ready to use in our railing tool. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.